know, may you know, may you know this. I want you and you to know this. How wide, how, wide, how, long, how long, how high, how high so deep. How wide, how, wide, how, long, how long, how high, how high so deep. deep. Is the love of Christ for you? Is the love of Christ? Hello boys and girls, how are you? I believe you're fine wherever you are. This is a wonderful day that the Lord has given unto us. And you know what boys and girls? We need to rejoice and be glad in it. So welcome, welcome. Before we go to any other thing, I want us to pray. So close our eyes and let us pray. Father, we thank you for this wonderful day that you've given unto us. As we are going through the lesson, I ask you to bless us. In the mighty name of Jesus, we do believe and pray. Amen, amen. And you know what, boys and girls? I am so happy, I am so happy. And I know, I want us to sing a song, and I know you know this song. Huh? So, we sing together. I am happy today, so happy. In Jesus' name I am happy, because he has taken away my sins away. I am happy, so happy today. And the time to be happy is now. And the place to be happy is here. And the ways to be happy is to make someone happy and to have a little heaven down here. Well done, boys and girls. Clap for yourself. Well done. Well done. And today's topic will talk about I am thankful for the Bible. I am thankful for the Bible. I want you to turn to that person you are sitting next to. Tell him or her that I am thankful for the Bible. And you see what, boys and girls? What is the Bible? The Bible is the Word of God. And if you want to understand about God and Jesus, where do you read from? You read it from the Bible. Thank you so much. Just clap for yourself. Just clap for yourself. Clap for yourself. Clap for yourself. Very good. This is story of a certain king called King Josiah. King Josiah saw the temple of God was dirty. So he decided to call people to come together so that they can help him clean the temple. So the people agreed. So all people came together and they decided to go to the temple so that they can clean this temple. So you could see people carrying different things. Others came with pieces, small pieces of clothes to wipe the dust. Others came with brooms. Others came with bucket of water. Others came, people came together. And you know what? They did this work with joyfulness in their heart. They did very perfect work. They wanted to have a clean place to worship God. So as they were cleaning, they found something strange. A scroll, boys and girls, a scroll. So they decided to take this scroll to the king. So off they ran towards where the king was and they gave the scroll to the king. And the king said, okay, let us read the words in this scroll together. So the king decided, okay, let's sit down and listen to the words. So they read the words. And as, the, the more they read, they felt joy in their heart. The more they read the words, they felt joy in their heart. The more they continued reading, they had joy in their heart. And you know what, boys and girls, the reason why they had joy in their heart, because they wanted to obey God's word. Everyone wanted to obey what the Lord was saying in his word. And I know when you read the Bible there at home with your mom and dad, you're going to obey God's word. So boys and girls, we are thankful 
for the Bible. And you know the reasons why we are thankful for the Bible? Because God has given us this Bible so that we can read through it, understand it, share the words with other friends. And you know what? When we do that, God is going to feel happy. And you know what? He's happy because we are doing according to his word. And I believe you're going to share your, your, the words of God to your friend. When you read the Bible, please make sure that you don't read alone. You can call a friend so that you can read together because that is what God wants. And that is why we are so grateful for the Bible. And now, boys and girls, I want us to get to our memory verse. And our memory verse comes from the book of John, chapter 1, verse 1. John, chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. We can repeat again. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. John chapter 1, verse 1. So boys and girls, it's craft time. And are you ready? So this is to our parents. Help us by downloading the craft from uh, the Nairobi Chapel website. Give it to your son or daughter. Let them color well. Let them enjoy doing whatever the craft asks us to do. And you know what? Uh, that in, on the craft, this parental discipleship time. Just read through it and help your son and daughter to get everything that uh, it's required for him or her to grow in Christ. Otherwise, boys and girls, bye. See you next time. Bye-bye. New Year boys and girls. I hope you have been well. It's yet another year and another day that God has given unto us and therefore we are supposed to rejoice and be glad in it. My name is teacher Jassy and I'm super excited to bring you our today's lesson. But before that I want us to humble ourselves before God and pray. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father we are so so much thankful to you for such a great day that you have given unto us. And as you're going to hear from you, we pray that you're going to help us to put your word into practice. In Jesus' name we pray and we believe. Amen. Amen. So boys and girls, today we are going to have a very interesting lesson of which I know most of us have a lot of questions concerning it and they want to understand more about it as well. But before that, I want to ask if you're having a notebook, a pen, and a Bible as well. But if you don't have it, kindly run for it. And if you have it, as we wait for others to come, shall we sing this song together? Are we ready? This is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. That was
was awesome boys and girls so our today's lesson it's about assurance of salvation assurance of salvation and if you're having your notebook and your pen i want you to write these two questions down the first question are we ready do you know if for sure that you're going to be with god in heaven one day i repeat again do you know if for sure that you're going to be with god in heaven one day just write yes or no and if you're not sure just leave a blank space we are coming to that okay the second question if god was to ask you why he should let you into his heaven what would you say i repeat again if god was to ask you why he should let you into his heaven what would you say and now i want us to take our bibles with us take your bible and i want us to open in the book of john chapter 14 john chapter 14 from verse 2 to 6 in my father's house are many rooms if it were not so would i have told you that i go to prepare a place for you and if i go to and prepare a place for you i will come again and will take you to myself that where i am you may also be and you know the way to where i am going thomas said to him lord we do not know where you are going how can we know the way verse 6 jesus said to him i am the way the truth and the life no one comes to the father except through me and boys and girls i have a question for us do you have jesus in your life and if so how sure are you I know most of us have been asking this question. Are we going to go to heaven or what will happen after the rapture and everything? But what does the Bible say? Verse 2. In my father's house are many rooms. If we are not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? So we go back to the first question. Do you know if for sure that you will go to heaven and see God? And the answer is yes, because that is what the Bible says. That when Jesus was speaking with his disciples, he told them that he is going up there in heaven to make rooms for us, to make a place for us. Therefore, we are assured as Christians that one day we will go to heaven and meet our Christ Lord Jesus. So the first question write a yes if you have not written anything write a yes therefore we are going to meet christ in heaven the other question is if god was to ask you why he should let you into his heaven what would you say if jesus asks you why would i let you in to heaven what would you say and i know most of us are asking hey it's because uh, I will tell God it's because I have been doing great work. I have been so much hard working. I have helped a lot of people. I have shown kindness to a lot of people. All those answers are correct. But I want us to focus on this one thing. I want us to take us ourselves back in the Bible, in the book of Genesis, whereby we learn the story of Adam and Eve. These two people, God told them not to eat a fruit in the, from the tree of their knowledge, but they did it. They disobeyed God. When Adam and Eve sinned, sin entered into the world and it spread. And therefore, most of us, we have missed the mark. And I know some of us are asking, teacher, what do we mean when we talk about sin? Mm-hmm. Sin is when you do something, you think of something, you talk of something that does not please God. Therefore, boys and girls, I want you to ask yourself, have you done something 
or thought of something or even seen something that does not please God. I know all of us we will say yes because we have done it and that shows that we have missed a mark. But boys and girls, God looked at us and he had mercy upon us and he sent his only son Jesus Christ to come here on earth and die for us. And through Jesus Christ, we receive a gift of salvation. And we are going to see this in the book of Acts chapter 4, verse 12. Let's take our Bibles and go in the book of Acts chapter 4, verse 12. Acts 4, 12, who is there? Aha, uh -huh, let's read. And there is salvation in no one else for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved so boys and girls it's through this text that we see jesus christ gave us a gift of salvation and receiving salvation it's very very simple it's like abc whereby A represent, you just admit. Admit that you have done wrong. And this we see in the book of Romans chapter 3, verse 23. Let's open Romans chapter 3, verse 23. Romans chapter 3, verse 23. And the Bible says, For all have sinned, and fall short of the glory of God. The Bible says that everybody have done sin, all of us. But one thing we need to do, we need to admit. Don't say that I have never done sin. I have never committed sin. The Bible says we have all done sin. So just point number one, admit that you have done sin. And be represent, you just need to believe. Believe that Jesus Christ died for us. Believe that God gave us his only begotten son to die for us. And I want us to read in the book of John chapter 3 verse 16. And I know all of us knows this verse because we started saying it while we were still small kids. John chapter 3 verse 16. I know some of us are reciting because I know we all know it. John chapter 3 verse 16. And this is what the Bible says. For God so loved the world uh -huh, that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but has what? But have eternal life. So just believe that Christ died for you. Just believe that God gave his only begotten son to die for you and me and to die for all of us. And the last one that we see is about confessing. Confess that Jesus is in your life. Confess to people and let people know that you and the world are two different things. And that you and God you all together and that you have admitted that Christ is in you, that you have allowed Christ to reign in your life. And this I want us to read in the book of Acts chapter 16 from verse 31. Acts chapter 16 from verse 31. If you're there, say amen. Acts chapter 16 from verse 31. Let's read together. And they said, Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. Just confess that Christ the Lord is in your life. And when you do that, boys and girls, Jesus will be happy with us. I know someone there outside there is asking, but teacher, when you do something wrong, will you stop being a child of God? Mm -hmm. Do you think you will stop to be a child of God? Do you think Jesus will hate you? I know some of us are confused. I don't know what to say. But the thing is, God has given us a chance of repentance. When you do sin, you just humble yourself before God 
and you cry to God and tell God, God, I have done this and this and this and just repent. In the book of 1 John chapter 1 verse 9, we see that God has given us a chance of us just repenting of any sin that we have committed. So if you do sin or if you commit any sin, Jesus does not hate you. Jesus still loves you. What he does, he wants you to do, it's just for you to repent. Admit that you have done that sin, tell God to forgive you. So if you repent your sins to God, what you do, don't go back to the sins you used to do. Do things that will please God. And so boys and girls, maybe you are there and you just want to give your life to Christ. You feel like, I don't want to continue with this sinful nature. I just want Christ in my life. Today is the day. I just want you to lift up your right hand and repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I admit that I am a sinner. I invite you in my heart that you may reign in my life. I thank you for forgiving me my sins. And I thank you for loving me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. So, boys and girls know that heaven rejoices when you receive Jesus in your heart. If you have made that prayer and asked Jesus in your heart, please text us on the number on the screen. Or tell your parents or children's pastor. We are so, so much happy for you. And now it's time for our memory verse. Are we ready for the memory verse? It's coming from the book of Ephesians chapter 2 from verse 8 to 9. Ephesians chapter 2 from verse 8 to 9. It says, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. Ephesians chapter 2 from verse 8 to 9. Can we do that one more time boys and girls? Ephesians chapter 2, let's do it together. Ephesians chapter 2 from verse 8 to 9. It says, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God not by works, so that no one can boast. Ephesians chapter 2 from verse 8 to 9. That was amazing, boys and girls. And so that we can understand this more, maybe when you're hanging out with friends, kindly recite this and teach them this memory verse. And also maybe your parents and guardians as well, just teach them this memory verse. It's time for crafts, boys and girls. Are we ready to do the crafts? Mmm, amazing, amazing. So if you don't have the crafts with you, kindly request your parents or guardian to download it from Nairobi Chapel website. May God bless you so, so much. Let's pray. Our God and our Father, we are so, so much thankful. Thank you for such a beautiful lesson that you have taught us today about assurance of salvation that you have given us salvation as a gift. And Father, we thank you because of giving us your only begotten son to come here on earth and die for us. We don't take it for granted. We thank you so, so much, our Lord and our Savior. May all the glory and honor be back unto you. And for those who have given their lives to Christ, may you continue to guide them. May you continue to lead them in accordance to your will. We love you and we exalt your name. In Jesus' name we pray and we believe. Amen, amen, amen. So thank you so much, boys and girls, for listening. See you next time. Bye-bye. No.